Good afternoon, everyone. Greenland ice continuing its upward growth, breaking records. November North America and Greenland all time record snows. El Nino has peaked. 43% of all the new records set in the United States are cold records. Record snow cover for the United States in December. The Barrow Sea Ice Cam records this much ice in July and then suddenly goes offline. NOAA back at it again, manipulating temperatures to show a warming trend. And the climate hustle is out, detailing the real agenda behind global warming. In the first couple weeks of November, Greenland recorded all-time record ice and snow growth since the satellite era has begun. It's continuing along that same trend, even pushing through November, or just above the 2014-15 winter, far above the 2011 and 12 winter, and again above the mean. So there should be some correlating data with this. Here we go, November North America and Greenland snow cover extent all-time high ever recorded in our satellite era. October North America Greenland snow cover extent combined also showing an upward trend. The number of days of melting on Greenland is also decreasing lockstep with the increased snow cover. Taking a look at El Nino it has peaked. It did reach the maximum extent last month. It's going to continue to decrease from now on, and we are going to enter La Nina in 2016, which will usher in a substantial cooling event globally. This is the U.S. Daily Records Summary. I wanted to continue with the high max because global warming proponents always say it's the hottest year ever. So we'll go with the maximum heat, and we'll go also with the maximum cold, the low min. So taking a look at the difference between the high maximum temperatures and the low minimum temperatures across the United States over the last 365 days, 43% of all these records being set are cold records. The global daily record summary, 34.3 of all these records are cold records. That's more than a third. U.S. all-time record summary last 365 days, nearly 35% of these all-time records are cold records. Globally as well, 30% are cold records. That is nearly a third. U.S. monthly record summary, 30% cold records set. Global monthly records drops down a little bit to 25% almost. That is a quarter of all the records. I was told global warming, hottest year ever. How is that possible? A third or greater than all the records being set right now are cold records. Yet we're being told it's the warmest year ever. Climate Depot, also the creators of Climate Hustle, show record high snow cover for December 1st at 38.7% of the United States covered in snow. Give you two different views here. Going back to the October hemisphere snow cover extent, that's including Eurasia, showing an upward trend. November North American snow extent, right at the all-time record high since the satellite era began. Climate Hustle, just out in Paris. This really does detail the true reasons for the global warming movement. It's not about the climate. It's not about temperature. It is about controlling you through taxes, locking you into your economic strata so you can no longer consume, limiting economic growth on this planet so there's no more consumption and usage. It is a full-on protectionist measure it's more of a ploy to take us back to feudalism, where you're told what you can consume. You're told what you can produce. You're told how much you're allowed to grow economically. You're told where to live, where you can't live. That's where these biosphere UN zones are at. You're not allowed to be in there. You're going to be told where to live. This is the end play. Barrow Sea Ice Cam records this much ice in the middle of July, but wait, we were told it was supposed to be ice free. Camera offline from then. Also, we've been bait and switched. A scare tactic was put out by the IPCC to say that sea ice will 
all melt and land ice glaciers will all melt and we will just flood our cities. But when we really look at the data going back to 1979, you can clearly see that the sea ice extent never dropped below 14.5 million square kilometers ever. And it's been increasing pretty much since the year 2006. And this is one of the most poignant graphs that I've really ever seen on this global sea ice scare. I hope you stop and take a look at it and see really where the lies are taking place. There's no such thing. There was never a danger point that we went below down to almost zero. It's never occurred and will not occur. Gulf of St. Lawrence sea ice area. Now this is really far south. This is the channel and waterway that leads into the Great Lakes. Look at the ice recovery. It's showing that the ice is pushing further south. A snapshot of 2014 and 15 northern hemisphere snow extent, December 3rd. This year, it's even greater extent than last year. And last year broke quite a few different records. This is a view of just Eurasia. You can see this year in 2015, the snow has definitely pushed further into Mongolia, Heilongjiang in China. Look over Canada and Alaska here on this one, jumping over into the Kamchatka Peninsula, top left. Now we've been told it's going to heat everywhere, so if we are going to experience cooling, it should be a global event. Bjornholt, which is pretty close to Oslo in Norway. Now the yellow circles at the bottom are the dates of the first snow. So as you can see, the dates of the first snow are actually occurring earlier than they are in the 1980s. So if it's cooler and snowing earlier and colder than it was in the 1980s, we could definitely expect it to be cooler than that. And all of North America was affected during that time, transportation-wise, growing seasons, prices on food, commodity, heating, all these types of things had a difficult time. Nice color-enhanced view of global sea surface temperatures. I want to draw your attention up in North America, right next to Greenland, that's Baffin Island to the left. But if we go into Hudson Bay, You'll see there's an enormous amount of ice cover this year in Hudson Bay. Compared to the historical norm, this year's ice extent is almost equivalent with 1997. So when they talk about, oh, it's the warmest year ever, I'm starting to see patterns of recovering ice and snow and cooler temperatures. I'm going to draw your attention to the Palmer Drought Index. This is a U.S. parameter set up by the Office of Climatology where it measures dryness based on precipitation and temperature. The yellow in the negative is where it's drier and warmer. The green is where it's wetter with less significant temperatures. This is a hundred year slice of time. The left side starts at 1915. The right side is where we are today in 2015. As we go through, you can clearly see in the 1930s where the Dust Bowl occurred. And we'll jump up into the 1980s, which obviously was the scientific consensus at the time that we were going into a cooler era, which would have more cloud moisture and more snows, which it did. Now, we've been told these droughts are getting more severe and the heat is at an all-time high and the droughts are at the most recorded ever in thousands of years. Yet, this 100-year slice of time tells a completely different story. The Dust Bowl in the 1930s era is significantly, absolutely, exponentially more severe than anything we've experienced in the last 50 years. And being told time and time again, it's getting drier, it's getting hotter, it's getting more severe, the far lines on the right show a completely different story. Case in point, California is at negative four. When you get into the negatives, that's where the yellow is. But... We have just as much wet condition in the United States, if not more, than dry condition. Number of November days in Boulder, Colorado with snow increasing. If it goes up just a little bit, that'll be the second highest on record since 1915 in 100 years. Tennessee measuring stations. These are days that are over 35 degrees Celsius or around 100 degrees Fahrenheit been a significant drop since the 1950s in days that are over or around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Wait, I thought it was heating to all-time record highs. How's that possible? NOAA, 
Contiguous U.S. average temperatures starting at 1920 going forward to 2015. You can see definitely an upward trend. And then we have the same satellite data showing that there's been no global warming for 18 years and 8 months. So I said to myself, why don't I put these together and do a comparison side by side? I'd like you to take a look in the yellow boxes that I highlighted. They're both the exact same span of time from the late 1990s in through, say, 2004 or so. Now, the top contiguous U.S. temperature from NOAA shows the heat spike as well as the RSS shows the heat spike. But as you can see, there was a decrease in temperatures right back to almost the base point of where the heat spike started in around 2003. The bottom chart with RSS feed shows that for sure. You can easily see it that there's been a bounce around in temperature, but it's pretty much remained stable and there hasn't been any heating in the last 18 years. But NOAA at the top line chart you can clearly see that those temperatures never receded back down. Now where the temperature should be showing on the top NOAA chart is where I put the red dot. Not way up a degree warmer. And this is the whole debate about NOAA manipulating temperatures to show a, a warming pattern on purpose for some political agenda, hiding records from Congress, telling Congress they're being singled out as a witch hunt. You show data, I'll show data and we can just have a nice debate about it. Explain how you <laughs> arrived at your information. NOAA and the IPCC are afraid to show their data because the data that's coming out currently shows a cooling trend. Yet, the information given that drives our economic policy is, is hidden behind closed doors. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. You can clearly see that we're not warming at an all-time record high in 2014 and 15 were not the warmest years ever they conveniently forget all the cold records that were set remember to spread this around your social media network circles of people coming together can discover the truth together